<laughs> okay. Um, so, well, when I was first asked if I would be interested in, in speaking at Write the Docs, I was a little confused because I, I wasn't sure what I would have to offer to a group of documentarians. Um, but my, my good friend Chaco I thought it would be <laughs> interesting to talk about a different style of communication. Um, and so that's what I'm here to do today. So who am I? My name is Lindsay. I am a geographer. All three of my degrees are in geography. Uh, I have three cats. I'm engaged to a Swede. He's right there. He's one of you. So please drop this <laughs> And I work in communications. I am currently the communications officer at The Case for Her, which is a philanthropic investment portfolio, <laughs> which we exclusively invest in two areas menstruation and female sexual pleasure, which are both um, very underfunded and underrecognized areas of women's health. So what does a communications officer do? Well, there's kind of two main tasks that I fill. The first is to make sure that our message is heard, but the difference between me and a marketer is I, I we don't pay for that messaging to put out there, so I'm earning all of the the press that we get. And it's also about maintaining a consistent voice, making sure everywhere, every platform that we're heard on, that we're putting out consistent messaging and positive messaging. And I primarily do that through social media. I'm uh, responsible for uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram accounts, public relations, working with uh, people in media, so journalists, awards, uh, podcasts, but also internal communications. I mentioned that part of my responsibility is keeping everyone on the same page. So that's when a new report comes out, digesting that and making that material available to everyone at the case for her so that you know, we're all up to date on what's the, the latest and greatest in, in news in our space. Why communications? You might be wondering how did a geographer end up in a comms role? Well, someone has to. I remember getting very frustrated when I was coming after academics that there was all this amazing research being done, but not enough people were talking about it. So what good is information if no one ever gets to hear about it? And what good is that information if only a select few can actually understand it? So I want to do a little bit of an exercise. Well, actually, let's, here. I want you to read this text, this very long, complicated text, and think about it. And think about what would you do to make this be more concise, more understandable. Just take a minute, see if you can offer up a suggestion. Replace it with a picture. That's an option. Yeah, you know. Yeah? Uh, the bullet point uh, will make more sense. Yeah? Please, under a heading. Under a heading, sure. Take out any sort of industry specific words or basically whatever you want to Absolutely. Does anyone want to take a shot at making this a little more simple? I assume cartographic material is maps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, why don't I show you what I did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. To guide urban planning projects, local authorities received survey results as gridded maps showing an index score for each area. So coming back here, why is it so important to write simply? Most adults actually read at a level that's close to where a child reads. I was just looking today, in the UK, one in seven adults is reading at the same level as age 9 to 11. But you're also uh, kind of battling against these really short attention spans. That first text was so long and so complicated and so boring. I, mean, I wouldn't have blamed you if you stopped reading it after three words. And also, fluff distracts from the real story. Why would you want this? Maybe you can have this. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at these two texts, let's break it down. The quantification of the positive and negative points observed through this participatory method and index score allows the calculation of a value 
or spatial index represented on a map. This cartographic material is in turn a tool to work with local authorities. Local authorities receive survey results as printed maps. And finally, the most important part of the sentence was all the way at the bottom. To guide and classify both the work of maintenance of public space designed or redesigned in public safety. You're guiding urban planning projects. By having this massive blob of text, you're losing the punch, you're losing the value, and you're losing your readers. So I would like to leave with you today, the group of technical writers, just a few tips about how to make your writing more simple, more easily understood, and more memorable. <coughs> Keep it simple. Say what you must. Nothing more, nothing less. Career growth was an important factor in why I decided to join, which was probably true for many of you today, but also true, I joined to advance my career. Much more simple, much more easy to understand, and I put a link here. Grammarly is a great um, resource for learning about concise writing. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. A second tip is to be direct. Avoid using a passive voice when it's possible. So I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir, the choir here, but in an active voice, the subject performs the verb. Martin prepared dinner. Passive, the subject is acted on by, by the verb. <clears throat> dinner was prepared by Martin. It's much easier to lose the meaning and be misunderstood when you're speaking in a passive voice. And the best tip I can give you is ask someone else to read your writing. Someone who you trust, someone who's in a completely different field, make sure they can understand it. If you're a programmer and you're trying to write a blog post that you want you know, to reach a wide audience, ask a friend who is a cook in a kitchen. If they can understand it, it's likely that a lot of other people will as well. Or a tech writer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so easy to forget that you're the expert and get kind of lost in knowing everything in the back of your mind and forgetting to put that forward on paper. So a couple of resources that are helpful. I mentioned Grammarly. Uh, Grammarly is a, well, a grammar editing platform. They have a free version, but there's also paid versions where you get more uh, perks. But I really like Hemingway Editor. It's a free web-based app that will actually grade your writing on readability. I see it as a challenge to myself to try and get my grade as low as possible without losing my message. But it will also highlight where there's a simpler way to say things, where you're using the passive voice, and then you can try and tweak your text to make it more readable. But yeah, that's all I've got. Um, I have a website. I don't update it that much, but it's there. <laughs> and you can follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn as well. Thank you so much for your time. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you write differently for different channels? Absolutely. Um, especially on social media because each platform tends to have a slightly different audience. If I'm writing copy for Instagram, I mean that's kind of where our friends and our family and our like really close partners are. So it's a bit more you know fun and personal than if I were writing on Twitter or on LinkedIn, where we're really kind of getting down to, to business. So it's really, you have to know your audience very well. What's your biggest challenge? Um, well, I, so currently I'm working in, uh, in an in investment portfolio, and that's not my background at all, so I mean, it's, it's always learning is, is a challenge, but that's the fun part too. <laughs> Yes. One question I have about uh, the part to avoid uh, passive and generally indirect speech. The sure. thing is that uh, in many cases, the purpose of that and uh, say less concise writing is to do something that is reusable and applies to many cases, especially mm. when in technical writing. So, how would someone? Okay. Uh, 
avoid that obstacle because otherwise that might mean that you have to write a different text for every single case and that's very time consuming. Sure. Otherwise. Well, it also depends a lot on, I mean, it's not always possible to always use an active voice. If the action is more important than the subject, it might make more sense to use a passive voice in that situation. So, I mean, you really have to you know, know your audience, know what is the important thing that you want to emphasize in your text, and then go on there. I mean, you'll, in general, it's a good idea to be as active as possible to really get your messaging across, but there are situations where a passive voice is more appropriate, sure. Uh, I use Grammar a, a lot. And uh, they always punish me for using passive voice. Oh but, yeah. Yeah, but I, uh, I, uh, from from tech writing's point of view, I, I skip that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I use passive voice often. Anyway. Well, I mean, I also wanted to talk about something that's kind of maybe not so applicable to technical writing, but writing in yeah. general. Yeah. Like if you're a blogger oh, sure, sure. or you're posting a lot on social media or even like writing emails, just it's it's always important to make yourself heard, make your voice stronger. But I, I think, like, I, I totally agree with you about active voice. I, I kind of oppose to passive voice. Yeah, yeah I, I, I kind of understand because uh, when you receive the information, it dep depends on what the purpose of the content. Of course, if you want to just, you know, showcase the features of your service or products, then the focus is on the thing, the object, yeah. not on people. But if it's going to be show how to use the service or the product, then the focus is on the uh, actions yeah. on the people. So I think it depends, but uh, I agree. I like active voice. <laughs> I, I agree too, like from a user user experience perspective, activating the user is being like, yeah. you can do this is like, things, even in instructions and technical writing can be very important. Instructions for sure, and I mean, it, passive voice can be a slippery slope into losing the, the meaning, like the confusion that it can follow. So. But no, if, if the action is the more important point, then passive voice when graphic that. Slightly changing the topic back to your communication officer business. Sure. So you told that um, you tried to pack the message for different auditories, like especially on the social media. Yeah. But as a communications officer, you sort of have to ensure the communication is persistent. Yes. And so how do you both make it different but make it persistent? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess that's where the documentation would come in for me, uh, because uh, a part of the, the role is to develop kind of these key messages that you always want to get across, the things that are really, really important to, to your organization or to your business or, or to your partners and customers, and then sticking to those, but then adding the stylistic flair for the different platforms. And how many key messages do you have, for example, right now? Is it like two, three, one? Well, it, it also depends. So we have two different portfolios. We have the menstruation and the, the sexual pleasure portfolio. So there's key messaging involved in both of, of those portfolios. Um, and then, it, I mean, they, they change constantly as well. And it's uh, being developed uh, kind of as we speak, because this is a relatively new company for me. I just came on board. So that's also the fun part, is cool. developing our messaging and putting everything forward and you know deciding what's really important and what we really need to focus on. Uh, you talked about, uh, as a communications officer, uh, right, uh, reading new reports, mm -hmm. staying on top of the game and spreading the wealth, sharing this knowledge. Yeah. Uh, could you talk to them about the benefits and maybe challenges with that? Sure. Well, I mean, the benefit is, you know, we're, we're a relatively small team. There's just, just four of us in the office. But, I mean, when these new reports come out, when there's a webinar, it's a bit of a time waste for all four people to read the report, to sit in the webinar. So it's much, yeah, it's, it's a time saver to have one person kind of digesting that information. Uh, so I think that would be one of the primary benefits. Um, but, I mean, the challenge is the same as putting information forward to anyone. It's, it's presenting it in a way that's understandable to everyone, because we all come from very different backgrounds. I said with geography, but we have you know someone who's been involved in, in women's rights primarily and more politics. Uh, we we have a, a technical writer actually, someone who was uh, involved in finance. So it's finding a way to to make the messaging yeah, impactful and, and presentable by everybody. 
that uh, particular aspect of your job? How important would you say that it is? For oh. you? And how time consuming is it for you? Uh, it's the, the most important part, I mean, in, in every aspect, is, is making sure that you're as widely understandable and approachable as possible. Um, it's kind of my favorite part. Like, I love taking these technical texts and breaking them down and making them understandable. I mentioned it's a bit of a game for me to get the grade as low as I can on Hemingway and still have my messaging there. Um, but, yeah. sorry, uh, did I answer your question? I kind of got lost on a tangent there. <laughs> uh, and also, I mean, is it something that you spend a lot of time on? I mean, your work, is, 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 it, uh, is it very important for you at your current place to actually I mean, prioritize your resources in that direction, to spend sure. the time digesting, finding new stuff? Yeah, well, there's help for that. I mean, you can set Google Alerts, and there's different platforms that do media monitor for you. Um, but then it's, you know, kind of glancing through and doing a bit of power reading to, to pick out what's the most important and what would have the most impact at that moment, yeah. Okay, thank you. I guess I'll, I'll be around later, too, if anyone wants to chat. <laughs>